That's disgusting. I'm ashamed of you right now. Can't you see how much pain we're in? What makes you think we wouldn't have been happy? That we won't be happy? How could you talk about Lily as if she's already dead? You'd be better off if she dies. In fact, I'm disappointed that Chelsea didn't pass away with her. It certainly would have saved you the trouble. You need to leave. If you're not out of here in 30 seconds, I'm calling security. Don't bother visiting again. My name is Chelsea. I should start by saying that I didn't want it to end the way it did. In fact, if I could remove this entire series of events from my life, I would. The only thing that I would want back would be my baby boy. At the time, I was 28 years old and worked at a hotel as a receptionist. I had been married for a few years, and my husband, Richard, would bring me lunch in the afternoon. We had been trying for a kid for a long time, and we had just started an experimental treatment recommended by our doctor. Our family was ecstatic. Everybody was excited for a new addition to the family, and both of our parents couldn't wait to be grandparents. When I finally found out that I was pregnant, I planned a massive reveal party in the lobby of the hotel for when my husband came to visit. However, much to my surprise, he had decided to bring my mother-in-law Helen along to visit. I surprised him anyways, and my boss brought out cake for us to celebrate. My mother-in-law was more than excited and jumped for joy. Congratulations, you guys. I can't believe I finally get to be a grandmother. Do you have a due date yet? Not yet. I just found out yesterday. I'll be going to the doctor to see when the expected due date will be within the next week or so. When do we find out if it'll be a boy or not? Probably not for another few months. The baby needs time to develop still. What makes you think it'll be a boy? It's always a boy. Boys are better, and girls can easily become only fangirls. I don't want that. Our family only ever makes boys. Plus, we need to have an heir to carry on the family name. Hmm, I'm hoping for a daughter. I think being a girl mom and playing dress up or anything else would be very fun. I would love a boy too. I doubt it'll be a girl. I think you should start picking out boy names now. That way, you can have something decided in time for the baby shower. Well, I guess we'll find out. I didn't find it weird at the time. I didn't like that my mother-in-law was there for the reveal, since I wanted something more private with Richard, but I've never had any bad blood with his parents either. It wasn't until later that it started annoying me. Over the following weeks, she would send me her selection of boy names and start buying boys clothing. We warned her that if it was a girl, then she would have wasted her money, but she didn't listen. We wrote it off as one of her hidden quirks and continued on with our lives. We were excited to finally have the family we dreamed of. Of course, when we found out it was going to be a girl, we were immediately in love. We chose the name Lily after the Lillian Cafe where we had met and told the rest of the family. His mother was furious after finding this out and called us instantly. Of course it's a girl. I should have known you would ruin it. Excuse me? We could have had another beautiful baby boy, but instead you had to poison it. No wonder it took you so long to conceive. God must have been stopping you from destroying our family. What are you talking about? How dare you talk to me like that? This is our child and you should love her no matter what her gender is. You don't understand. We needed a boy to carry on the family name and instead you give us a useless girl. Richard stood by and didn't say anything. After I hung up, he tried to comfort me, but I pushed him off. I couldn't believe he didn't defend our daughter and I to his mother. I was angry and upset and left the room. Afterwards, we made up and talked it out. He explained that his mother had always loved the idea of having a son, but he never knew she would go this far. He was more stunned than anything by her reaction, which is why he took so long to act. We decided that, moving forward, we wouldn't tell her anything about the pregnancy. All of the information she gathered was from other family members or friends, and we would know she found out, as she would text us, as soon as she did. I stopped looking at the hate-filled messages and passing it off to my husband to respond. The months went by and my stomach grew. I was able to get maternity leave from my work so that I could spend the first eight months with my newborn. I hosted a baby shower with my friends, which Helen attempted to crash, but the security kicked her out. Helen began making passive-aggressive posts to social media, making wide claims about what a family should be and how horrible wives can ruin things. Richard told her to take them down, 
but she claimed that if I was relating to the posts, then maybe I had some introspection to do. I told you, she just gets weird about these sorts of things. I'm sure it's nothing personal. She liked you before. But now I'm the mother to her grandchild and to your child. It's not going to go back to how it was before. What if she stays like this? What if she never stops making these comments and our daughter has to grow up hearing how much her grandmother hates her? Don't think like that. I'm sure that it will be fine. And as soon as she lays eyes on her, she'll forget all about it. After all, who can hate a face with a nose like yours? Oh, stop. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I am just overthinking everything. I just want to know it'll all be okay. It will be, I promise. Two weeks before the due date, I woke up in contractions. Richard and I raced out to the car, drove to the hospital, and quickly found ourselves situated in a delivery room. The nurse said that we had gotten there just in time. The baby was turned around the wrong way inside me and was having a hard time entering the birth canal. We opted for an emergency C-section to make sure the baby wouldn't suffocate. Within a few hours, the baby was delivered I was allowed to hold Lily for a minute before she was passed into one of those incubation baskets. The doctors needed to run some checks on her to make sure she was healthy. I passed out from the myriad of drugs in my system and the weight of delivering a baby pressing down on me. My husband was by my side. When I woke up from the nap, the doctor delivered the bad news. The baby had been without oxygen for too long and wasn't doing well. They were going to keep her in emergency care and do everything they could. I was devastated and collapsed into tears. Helen arrived at the hospital soon after. Richard stepped out into the hallway to explain, but I could hear them clearly through the door. That's what she gets. Call it karma or what have you, but at least the problem is solved. Mom, don't talk like that. That's horrible. We might lose our daughter. Now you can try for a son. This is a blessing, don't you see? The way it was meant to be. It took us three years before we finally were able to have a child. What makes you think that we can do it again so easily? It's always been that way. Hopefully she'll have learned her lesson and heal quickly. You'll have another chance to have even more kids. Wouldn't you be happier with a boy? That's disgusting. I'm ashamed of you right now. Can't you see how much pain we're in? What makes you think we wouldn't have been happy? That we won't be happy? How could you talk about Lily as if she's already dead? You'd be better off if she dies. In fact, I'm disappointed that Chelsea didn't pass away with her. It certainly would have saved you the trouble. You need to leave. If you're not out of here in 30 seconds, I'm calling security. Don't bother visiting again. Richard entered the room again, and just before the door closed, I could see Helen walking away. I was disgusted, disturbed, tired, and more. I just wanted to go home, to bring my daughter home. We were another week in the hospital before Lily was cleared. She had responded extremely well to treatment and didn't seem to have many lasting effects. We still brought her back to the hospital once a week to make sure she was improving and it seemed to be going well. Helen tried to visit a few more times, but Richard had refused her at the door. When his dad tried to argue with him to let them see their grandchild, he told them that this was no grandchild of theirs and that they shouldn't come by anymore. Sure enough, we saw them less and less over the following year. Helen would occasionally make a social media post full of vitriol, but even those became easy to block out. Our happy family grew, we celebrated many milestones, and I returned to work as well. Richard decided to stay at home with the baby, and I got a promotion at my job as well, so I could take care of the family. On Lily's second birthday, we found out his grandmother had breast cancer that was threatening to spread through her chest. She had desperately wanted to apologize and wanted us to come back into her life. We refused, even against multiple family members reaching out to apologize on her behalf. We're entering three years since we saw her last, and we couldn't be happier with Lily never knowing that horrible woman. We don't feel bad about it. In fact, I find it almost an ironic karmic justice. By her rejecting her granddaughter for not being a boy, she had also lost her son. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.